We have been doing driverless testing in Phoenix since 2017. We have done it at small scale with a few riders, but early fall we have really begun to slowly and responsibly ramp up this service. They can get matched with a fully driverless car where there is no trained driver in the car at all. We have been at this for over 10 years now on uh, public roads uh, driven for 10 million plus miles. We have done 10 billion miles of simulation and the simulation is not only things that we have seen on the road, not only synthetic scenarios we have created, but also situations that we have made more adversarial than what we observe. For example, inserting cyclists and motorcyclists into a scene. And through a combination of multiple methods, we have reached the experience and confidence to be able to do this. Hi, this is Seema with Waymo Rider Support. I just wanted to quickly welcome you to your driverless ride and let you know this ride will be free. If you have any questions or concerns, you can press the help button in front of you at any time to connect with Rider Support. Do you have any questions for me while I'm on the line? Um, no, I think, uh, I think I'm just sort of taking in the experience right now. Okay, great. Well, I hope you have a great trip. And again, the help button is in front of you if you have any questions, okay? Thank you so much. However, we're constantly monitoring data, both from the test driver cars, uh, the simulation, as well as our driverless cars and our ongoing variety of testing. Anytime we find information that requires us to revisit a few assumptions, we will uh, always put safety first and take the requisite actions. There are a couple of areas that we had to pay special attention to. For example, when law enforcement or first responders have to interact with a completely empty car. So that's an entire area that we designed and tested, but also collaborated with first responders in the local area. Tested, for example, whether or not we are able to detect all kinds of sirens and flashing lights, but also how a police officer in an emergency can take over uh, the car if they need to. It was a little bit more of like sort of a classic design problem when we had all of this information and we had to create a hierarchy of that information. So what's most important? And then how does color map to what's most important? And so when we see like nearby pedestrians or cyclists, those are rendered as white sort of laser points on a dark background because the contrast there is the highest and they stand out the most. There were some practical considerations as well. We, we really want to go for a lean back experience when you're in the car. So we want to make sure that that UI isn't in your face and distracting and so that's why there's a dark color scheme to it and the colors are a bit subdued. It's taken years really to sort of understand the vast number of scenarios out there where people have different information needs. So I might be going to work in the morning and there's no construction. I'm coming home, there now is a construction site that's popped up and does the car understand that? Again, we're trying to reinforce the car does understand those changing road conditions. And we've been pleasantly surprised. It's one of the examples unprompted in our user research that people often cite. The fact that like, hey, there are 14 traffic cones on the side of the road here and I can see those in the passenger interface and they're very impressed that the, um, again, to that level of detail around what the car is picking up. Thank God. <laughs> All that learning we want to build into the product as we are learning them, refine our flows, refine our passenger screens, refine our rider support, but also in terms of how the product experiences. Uh, for example, any feedback they may have about how the routing is, their preferences on which side of street they would like to be dropped off on. If they want to be dropped off right in front of Walmart or slightly off it where folks aren't just exiting with all of their stuff from Walmart. So on a variety of these, I think there's product refinements we continue to do and we're in a unique position to do that because we're not just asking users what they want, we're actually seeing them in the fabric of their daily lives. We are uh, responsibly and thoughtfully ramping this up. So right now that ramp up has already begun and as we are able to incorporate all of this feedback, I see it as the natural progression that more and more of the rides will be uh, on completely driverless cars.